podcast listener from Malaysia named Sun Yin writes in to ask this. Hello, Pastor John. My home church hardly preaches about the cross in sermons, usually only during Easter or Christmas. I have approached my pastors and asked about this with gentleness, tact, and respect. They point out Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, stating that we need to move beyond the cross to other more mature teachings in the Bible. Is that the right view of the gospel? Thank you, Pastor John. When I was growing up, the church I was in preached and taught in a way that may perhaps be the kind of ministry this church in Malaysia is reacting against. They they are saying, this church in Malaysia are saying that we need to move beyond the cross to more mature teachings in the Bible. And in a sense, that's what I would have said about my church that I grew up in. Now, it's not a helpful way to say it. Well, I'll come back to that, but I'm just trying to figure out what's in the minds of this church when they talk like this to, to Sun Yin. It would have been misleading for me to talk like that, but something needed to change. I knew something was amiss. We did need to move on. <laughs> we, did, we did somehow need to go beyond what was being said Sunday after Sunday, because almost every Sunday, it seemed that we circled around to the most simple, basic, repetitive gospel invitation to unbelievers to be saved, and everybody started putting on their coats, and everybody knew it was coming, and we hardly ever got, quote, beyond it. It never felt as as though the depth and breadth and height of the biblical books were even being looked at, let alone penetrated. So I can imagine that, that a church, uh, this church in Malaysia perhaps, uh, would react against that by saying, we need, to get, we need to get beyond the cross. And what they might mean, maybe, is we need to stop being so superficial and repetitive and narrow in presenting the gospel to unbelievers at the expense of feeding believers on the riches of, of biblical truth. But the way to describe what's needed here is not to say that we move on from the cross. What, what's needed is to take all of Scripture into account and teach it in fullness and depth, all that it really is, and show our people how the cross of Jesus is profoundly the ground and the goal of all those teachings. In other words, we don't need to leave the cross behind. We need to show how scriptures are leading to the cross and how all the blessings of the New Testament and the blessings of life in Christ and the blessings of the age to come all of them flow from the cross, and, we, and we, sh- we show why we will forever be celebrating the grace of God, which is most supremely revealed in the cross. We are always going to be singing the, the song of the Lamb, the slain Lamb, forever and ever. But we, we do need to answer the question from the, from the church pastors about Hebrews 6, because it looks like they've got something going for their words there, right? They, here's what it says. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment, and this we will do if God permits. Now, what does he mean by leaving behind the elementary doctrine of Christ? And there are a couple of clues here that anybody can see if they just look close enough, do a look at the book here. And (laughs) the, the first clue is the statement, not laying again a foundation. In other words, 
What this author is opposed to is continually building foundations when we ought to be building on foundations. He's saying one day you lay a foundation, you dig it up and lay it the next day, and you dig it up and you lay it the next day. That's not what foundations are for. Foundations are for building. So put, put the foundation in the place and then let it stretch up into a beautiful building where the people can roam around in the house of God's Word and see all the glories being upheld by the, the foundation. So I, I think that's the first clue that uh, he doesn't mean that you forget, for goodness sakes, that Christ died, but that you don't keep treating it merely in a foundational way as though there's nothing else to talk about on top of it, leading out of it. And here's another clue. It says that he will not lay again a foundation of faith toward God. My goodness. <laughs> so, so I want to know, does the church in Malaysia leave behind faith toward God? I mean, good grief. What Faith toward God is the sum of the Christian life. Beginning, middle, end, we're going to be trusting God every moment of our lives. There's no leaving behind. So again, I think that points to the fact that the author of Hebrews didn't mean leave behind in the sense of don't talk about anymore, but rather stop digging things up and laying foundations over and over again, treating them in a a superficial, repetitive, elementary way, but rather get on with what foundations are for, build on them. And, And even the word foundation as a metaphor becomes inadequate. I think the Bible knows that, which is probably why the Bible sometimes juxtaposes both organic analogies like uh, roots and growth and foundations and building, because foundations really are separate from buildings, but but roots and, and branches aren't separate. They're all one growing piece. And so the implication is that that when you properly lay a foundation, it's like a root. It grows up into something big and, and glorious and beautiful. So when Sun Yen's pastors say, we need to move on from the cross to other more mature teachings in the Bible, perhaps what Sun Yen should suggest is that they consider the implications of Romans 8.32, which says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, that's the cross, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And the point of that verse is that all things, everything we have in the Christian life, everything that's promised to us in the future is rooted in, based on, growing out of God did not spare his own son and therefore can never be left behind because it is always the ever-present purchase price and sustaining power of every blessing that we have. So the cross was the the goal of redemptive history because the cross is the place where the glory of the grace of God was most supremely expressed, and we will be praising the glory of God's grace supremely expressed in the cross forever and ever. And therefore, in one sense, the cross is both the ground basis and the goal of all things, but it is absolutely crucial that the all things be preached. It's not simplistic. It's not limiting. It's not narrow uh, to say that we should be focused on the cross. I I pray that uh, Sun Yen's church will discover that all the riches of Scripture are not diminished by focusing on the cross. There's a way to be cross-centered, cross-rooted, cross-exalting without being cross-exclusive. Boom. Thank you, Pastor John. And thank you for the question, Sun Yen, one of our podcast listeners in Malaysia. If you have a question for John Piper, or if there's anything you want to know about this podcast related to this podcast, or if you want to listen to the archives, you can do all of that from our landing page at desiringgod.org forward slash ask Pastor John. Well, when we pray, 
where do our prayers go to? They certainly don't disappear into thin air, as John Piper will explain tomorrow as he explains Revelation chapter 8. I'm your host, Tony Reinke. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.